Hello, everyone, and welcome to the PSR Podcast, Season 4, Episode 4. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about everything that's happened in May in the PSR sphere. Um, with me as the usual host, I'm... Hello. Headbog. Hello, hello. And today, we have brought on guest, Wangbro. Yo, what up? Yep, so uh, Wangbro has a... PB to talk about, we're just gonna catch up with him, and uh, we're also gonna talk about quite a few of these Switch runs, um, spanning across the Let's Go, at Sword Shield, and Scarlet Violet, and uh, yeah, that's gonna be it. Uh, not really having a focus topic today, um, so we're just gonna go straight into our noted runs. I guess we could talk about the thing, like things that are going on currently, uh, oh, yeah. before we um, get going. Sure. Uh, we have the Right now, uh, the Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee tournament going on. Um, currently in round two, we just got done with the race, and we're gonna after, after this podcast is done, we're gonna have a race shortly after. Uh, Head Bob's gonna be racing in it. Yeah, by the time this is airing, I'm probably just gonna be like practicing a lot. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is a asynchronous pro- uh, podcast, so we're not live, but uh, I'm trying to fill the time between the two races just thought it was convenient enough and um another thing to mention is that the psr marathon 2024 uh quickly approaching and the submissions will close on the 19th of june uh at midnight est so if you're thinking about submitting something to draw off something uh make sure you get that in and i believe there's um there's a special inclusion this time around where we're gonna have like a little section for meme runs. Um, so, if you have, if you have something that you know, pretty memey or wacky, and you want to show it off, they're gonna be accepting it. It's not like a usual marathon where you have to be like showing off what what like people want to see. But you know, we're gonna, we're gonna have a little fun here. Mm-hmm. Well, to be fair, I think believe Randall did a blindfolded run last year. <laughs> yeah. So. That would that would fit into the meme category, I believe. We're expanding yeah, like on that this year. We're getting, we're getting a premiere a premiere spot to those who don't yep. necessarily want to do a full length series kind of, kind of run. So look on be on the lookout for that for sure. So June nineteenth, that is uh like a week and a half from from today. So just make sure you get that in, and uh, we can move on to the noted runs. So first off, we have uh, our guest, Wangro. Uh, he did a run of Crystal, glitchless, and he got a 3, 10, 11. Um, is there... So we, we do have highlighted uh, one of the low points in the run, the Lake of Rage encounters. Uh, Wangro, you want to take that away? Yeah, so I think overall, this was a very good run with like a very, with very with a few very low, very big low points, if I were to characterize it. So the main characteristic of crystal runs is normally how many spinners you hit, because each spinner can lose uh, at least 30 seconds, but usually close to 50 seconds to a minute. But this run was spinnerless. I didn't hit a single spinner. But obviously, as we see on screen here, I'm getting two like rage encounters. Each encounter is around 14 seconds, so I lost almost 30 seconds here to average runs. Uh, I made a pretty critical mistake in the ice path and lost another 30 seconds. Um, so outside of those two major things, the rest of the run was pretty standard, above average, like a good run. But yeah, those are definitely uh, very big low points for why yeah. this run is a 310 and not like a low 309, which is what like a standard spinnerless run should be. Yeah, I mean, from what I understand, like a spinnerless crystal run is like kind of a big deal, just because of how many times you have to pass spinners over the course of the run. So I mean, it's like any spinnerless run is bound to, you know, get a decent time, I imagine. Yeah, like the big things are um, obviously spinnerless, but also how good your Bugsy or Whitney times are, because there's not too many spinners in like the Bugsy split, but Bugsy has like a ton of variants in all the fights and. Mm. Uh, stuff like getting poisoned or confused so if you have like a decent bugsy split 
plus getting spinnerless, it should be like a low 309 every time or better. Um, and this was a, a pretty good Bugsy split and then spinnerless, and I just lost like a minute to stuff. Um, but yeah, I still playing for PB. We'll keep going, hopefully. How are you feeling about Crystal at the moment? Do you like the run? I do. I, I think I was worried that the novelty was going to sort of run out the better my times got. Um, but it's kind of fresh still. That's not the case, even though I'm sort of been, I'm sort of entering that territory where I am just dying to Bugsy and Whitney over and over and over again, which is sort mm -hmm. of the Crystal classic, or I guess Gen 2 classic even. Um, still feels like fine to run. Um, still feels interesting. I think a big part of that is actually because of the spinners. I actually enjoy spinner passes. It's just a, I don't know, it's just something that keeps the game interesting to me instead of just clicking the right move on Raikou for two hours straight. Yeah, I was going to say, especially <laughs> during Raikou, it seems like spinner passes would be like, you know, the, the entertainment of that section for sure. Um, all right, anything else? No, I mean, just like anything at all. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, mean, the big I, thing I, is a. Uh... Sorry, go ahead, Tucker. I was just going to ask go ahead, a question. You can go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, as of right now, my plans, I'm definitely still playing for like a 309 or maybe a 308, just depending on how the run is. But 307 and world record is definitely not my current goal because that's a disgusting time to try to play for. And, uh, one of the stronger runs in the in PSR, so yeah, definitely one of the better records for sure. Was it was the was record spinnerless? Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely okay. spinnerless. Had an amazing early game and only like a one or two minor hiccups that lost a little bit of time, but otherwise it was a. I, I hate to use this word, but it's a very almost a flawless crystal run. Like there's obviously little mistakes, but in terms of RNG, very few things went wrong for. Mm -hmm for wave during his uh, low 308. Especially in the context of gold, right? Because gold has been like, the gold record has had a spinner hit like for like a very long time at this point. Yeah. And there's significantly less passes over the course of the run, which is like kind of a testament to how crazy a spinnerless run is in Crystal. Um, so yeah, like definitely like, I mean, and waves had this record for quite a while at this point. Um, it's definitely not one to be beaten easily. Wing's obviously been pushing pretty hard for it, and you know, you even playing the best of your ability, like only so much you can do about about spinners and other things like that. Obviously, we saw the the two Lake of Rage encounters. Not much you can actually really do about that. Yeah, that one I'm not too. I think that was more of a meme thing for me. I'm more upset at myself at the ice path thing because that's something that. <laughs> is clearly in my control and i just uh push the one boulder too far by one tile and then i lose 30 seconds just yeah definitely clean that up for but, sure. uh, but yeah i mean zero nine definitely will happen it's just uh will be a matter of time awesome um what made you want to play crystal after playing only gen one basically yeah, so Crystal has sort of always been on my bucket list of PSR runs, which is not extended very far. Um, I think like most people, it comes from like a place of nostalgia. Like Crystal was my favorite game to play casually growing up. Um, and then when I started learning about the speedrun, I would rather play Crystal over Gold because I don't like the, the principle of the red fight in Gold, if that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, I know, like, Poke Guy and Wave always yell at me, like, the fight's not that bad, but just the idea that you can play for three hours and then you get locked in one thunder loop and you could die is just kind of silly to me. Oh. But yeah, I've always wanted to play Crystal for a while. I just didn't get a, a chance to really have the motivation to until recently. Um, I don't even know why I picked it. I think it might have been like the new emulator rewrite that sort of sparked it. Just wanted to test mm -hmm. it and then 
instead of testing it with Gen 1 stuff, which I think is kind of stale for me at this point, um, started learning Gen 2 and it was uh, just downhill from there. Or in a good way, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, I, I know with like conversations with uh, Wave that um, he thinks that you definitely could get record, but uh, I don't know if he like expects it necessarily. If that makes sense, because like his his record is just that strong, but um, I definitely think that if you put enough time, then you can definitely give him a run for his money if you even uh, strive to do so. I mean, you definitely have the skill level for it. It's just you know, getting getting the run. Yeah, and that's the thing with like a lot of Gen two and even Gen one to an extent is like there's so many people. Who have like the skill requirement to get a record in those games it's just who's actually willing to put in the uh the attempts to uh, oh my goodness get the rng <laughs> one thing wow. is being here is that you're kind of playing the spinner like you're, you're waiting for that like there we go <laughs> <Good Lord. Yeah. laughs> that was particularly i shouldn't have paused those are really bad pauses i should be more because i'm pausing when he's like looking right which is not a good thing yeah but, uh, no, but those spins were so. Unlucky. That was a lot of spins. Though. <laughs> uh, so I guess like you're playing spinners like really safely, like only doing like the the twenty five percent direction, and um, like on the first few frames only, and like if you don't get that, then you're going to retry. Yeah, Basically, I've been, every spinner. I've been sort of rethinking how I've been doing spinners because um, just watching some of the other top runs and because um, some runners. Um, one in particular like, would just not pause at all, very rarely pause and just go really based on um, good direction plus reaction time. They won't hit start at all, they'll just walk. And others like Gunner famously will um, pause almost excessively waiting for the perfect pass. And so he's willing to sacrifice a little bit more time to get a higher percentage uh, pass. Um, I think notably Gunner's run, he um, had a perfect like spin direction pause pass for every spinner except for one and the one that he didn't have the perfect direction pass was the one that hit him so it's just uh mm. um, interesting yeah so right now i'm sort of deciding how i want to play spinners like obviously if my run is slightly worse i'm willing to take like faster passes if they're more a little bit riskier but um, in general i think i'm trying to play them safer i think that makes more sense for like 309 that's a goal but yeah back to the conversation like 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 runners like poke guy or gunner or fran or anyone in the top like they all have the requisite skill to get like a 307 it's just um no one wants to put in the the time uh, mm -hmm. yeah fair yeah. enough like hitting one spinner with like 30 or something passes like we'll get very yeah. demoralizing on pace like yeah and the real messed up part is um i don't know if we'll get to this part of the run it's like the next gym which is in like another seven minutes but uh 307 is probably gonna require not manipulating douglas or not saving for douglas so inside prices gym yeah right before we do the ice section we save because there's a spinner coming up that we cannot pass safely, reliably. We just slide on the ice, and if he looks at us, we just get hit. Um, yeah, so if we do hit him, we points. restart, and we perform an RNG manip to get past him. But world record slash through seven attempts will probably have to skip saving for him and just YOLO him every single time, which is uh, when you're an hour and hour and a half into the run on the world record pace, and you have to no risk this it feels really sad yeah for sure yeah it's a very brutal risk that you have to go for kind of got the save kind of like that saves like what like 10 to 15 seconds Not i think sure. the save itself costs around 10 and then if there if you have to restart for him you lose another like 15 to 20. So if you skip saving for him and don't get hit, you save probably around 30 seconds. 
20 to 30 seconds. Yeah, but that's just like such a huge risk because you pass them twice, so no, the odds are pretty, pretty brutal. Yeah. Yeah, I think anecdotally, I've only made it here around like six or seven times, and I've only not hit him twice. So, most runs I've gotten here, I have had to the, the uh, perform the manip because, yeah, like you just there's no there's no way to pass him otherwise. You just sort of have to pray. It's kind of crazy. All right. Well, you have anything else to add at all? Anything? Uh, nope, Iron, you nothing. got anything? No, I'm good. <clears throat> it's good to see another Gen Two run on the podcast again. Yeah, and it's kind of like nobody has ran Crystal for like years mm -hmm. until we decide to run it. I, I, I guess like uh, some other people are also doing Crystal right now. It's just kind of. Up it's like if somebody starts something up then others will follow but yeah yep yeah like i guess i was about to say like now is actually or the past month has been pretty active for crystal because um obviously i've been doing attempts ocean bagels and other uh relatively good runners been doing attempts and then there's a japanese runner igarashi 06 he recently got like a 313 uh wow improved from like a 315 i think uh, and then nerdy's been doing runs minip and minipolis so it's been relatively active in terms of uh how gentoo normally is yeah uh yeah that's awesome i, I can see the love for crystal yeah gentoo doesn't usually get a lot of it so that's awesome All right, so I guess we'll I guess we'll move on at this point. Yep, um, we do have another Gen one to three run. It's uh, Ananans Fire Leaf Green Eighty Percent Glitchless JPN Emulator Record, um, but that kind of just happened, and we don't have the video for that. But he did get the record in that, and it's it's a two hundred one ten. I think it's like very comparable to the uh, console record by Pletty. Um, in JPN, coach list for Fire Leaf Green, but yeah. So, so congrats to him for that. And um, here we have a Platinum Any% percent run by Dexy. Uh, this is him going for the Sunny Shore tweak, and it, it kind of looks ugly, but then um, he soon realized that he forgot to repel. And uh, because he got this encounter, he has to redo the tweak after putting up another repel. Or putting up a wow. repel. So... Yeah, it's kind of like the only real blemish on this world record, um, which would, which is in itself a good time. Uh, 235, 34, it's not very easy to beat. Um, the Golda crowd is pretty straightforward. Um, because, you know, Chimchar is like very solid and standard. Not going to get much variance there, and Goldic as well. So kind of that just put a damper on this record uh, for Dexy and um, it's kind of a it's kind of a, a testament to how like standardized this route is like compared to how Tentacruel was where like you're going for like hydro pumps and like you had like ranges to go for like it, it was a uh, and, and the minip itself was like very yeah. very difficult it's like the worst um, one I feel like yeah like, the, the Golduck route is proving itself to be, like, you know, a lot more consistent, a lot easier to get on runs, um, and even faster. Like, it's just it's just a win-win-win for Golduck, pretty much. Um, another development in Platinum Any% percent, as if we don't get enough already. Um, this record is pretty much the last we'll see of the Fly route. Um, unless, like, another rudder just decides to not go with the newest route of platinum any percent um the the newest route uses uh an abra with teleport uh, this has been done before with um the tentacle route um that did switch over to 
uh, fly with Starly. Um, but, well, it, it switched over to a fly with Starly when um, Golduck into Tenta was uh, conceived, but then, um, you know, that, that kind of that kind of neutralized the time saves of Aber Teleport. Aber Teleport's kind of like this whole thing where, like, it affects the whole route based on, like, the shopping route and, like, uh, where you have to navigate, like, it's... It, you kind of just have to, like, do all the work of routing on the margins and then, like, figure out whether teleport or fly is the better option. And Worcester kind of decided, like, yeah, teleport's going to be faster with all the route changes. Um, this is uh, Worcester's recent PB. It's not uploaded on SRC, because I assume that, you know, he's... He's, a. Uh, He's expecting he's to get a yeah. better run like very soon, and I, I agree. Um, but yeah, this is just to show off like the the new teleport route. Um, kind of just doing a lot of things differently. You know, you obviously catch an Abra instead of Starly early before Orberg, and um, yeah, it's it kind of like you, you change the route so that you don't have to. Or you, ha you have to go to Fog Route and get to Celestic early before shopping for any X items in uh, Veilstone. So it kind of changes the order of the route. Um, so it's a little more difficult on Fog Route because you no know, X items and um, some of the things there are like almost the same level as Golduck. So there are a few like slightly scary fights for Golduck, but they're not too bad still because Golduck is just very good on fog route with cloud nine um i guess a lot of the there, there's a few funny things that happens in the route now where um he purposefully keeps the tokapi egg in his party so that he has a a second pokemon to send out on the um on the lake on the lake double before mars 2 i forget which lake that is but there is a double battle there, and you need two Pokemon to to make that a double battle. And uh, yeah, that that like saves a few turns because you know Golik just surfs. Um, and he also like he also figured out that um, teaching Brine the team that you get from uh, Wake is faster than like going out of his way for another PP item. It's just PP management. Um, yeah. That's to say that's this, these are kind of like the changes that we're gonna get now in Platinum Eighty Percent, where like it's ch it's just kind of like around the margins, like it's not really that exciting. Um, but yeah, it's just not really much lower that the the route can go unless something happens. I don't know. Um, but things always will surprise me. But yeah, um, I think we're nearing the end of all the all the route changes of Platinum Eighty Percent. And uh, I think we can expect a a record suit from Worcester. I think 234 is definitely on the table. I'm not sure if 233 is. I'm I'm pretty sure teleport route saves like only about 30 seconds on uh, the fly route. But yeah, that that and that's like at best like getting Abra first ball, which is like more difficult to catch than Starly. Yeah. So yeah. I say first of all because you can taunt Abra with Chimchar. Somehow it gets taunt in a smooth set, so you can go for multiple catches on Abra. So yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's pretty much it for Platinum Ready Percent. Hopefully, we'll see more from Worcester in the future. Definitely seems like a promising route. Yep, definitely. All right, so we got a uh, no 3DS runs this month, unfortunately. Um, that are notable, I guess. Um, but we have here we have Saiyan's new Let's Go Pikachu any percent no mount skips world record of two fifty nine fourteen. Uh, this was done a couple weeks back, and it feels it feels like it kind of came like out of nowhere, kind of a little bit. Yeah. For um, sure. This was like right before the tournament happened, and Saiyan had kind of just came back to running again. Um, and then he popped this out, and it definitely. Seems like a very good time. Um, he was using Turbo, but um, I mean, Saiyan's just always been like a strong Let's Go runner since he basically came into PSR. That was like the game he started with. Um, so this isn't actually all that surprising for sure. 
Um, not sure exactly how, you know, the, the run as a whole went, but obviously to get sub 3, um, must have been pretty good. Obviously Thunderbolt here is not the greatest thing in the world, but... Um, yeah, I mean, it seems, it seems like it seems like it's gonna be a pretty good fight. Four turn, probably. Oh, he got the self-destruct plus possible. boomerang kill. That's good. Yeah. In my race, that apparently is a effectively a Gen One miss. <laughs> if <laughs> self-destruct <laughs> hitting or eradicate plus boomerang. Thank you for putting it into terms that uh. That I <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Yeah. How common is it for the spider uh, C for calculating that? Sorry. How common is it for runners to use uh or use turbo and let's go? It's actually pretty uncommon because yeah, is, yeah. um, Turbo Joy-Cons, they're not even like hard to come by, they're just like harder to come by, I guess, and more niche than like a, a Pro Controller with Turbo that people use, you know, in Sword Shield or Scarlet Violet or whatever. I see. Um, but yeah, not many people actually use Turbo. They're, they're, um, they're merged on the boards, um, but for the most part, majority of the, uh, the top runners will just use no Turbo just because it's what they have on them. Mm. Um, I will say firsthand, I, I think Joy-Con mashing can be a little bit higher some of the time, so I definitely understand why why you would want to do this, for sure. Yeah, I find mashing in this game is not nearly as bad as, like, Sword and Shield, or definitely not as bad as Scarlet Violet, so... Um, yeah, the fact that you can mash, like, three different buttons at a time... Kind of puts all that strain, and it's also on like the same controller. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of Joy-Con mashing either. Mm -hmm. It's definitely uh, maybe not want to play for very long on some days. I'm taking a look at his uh his catch row right now. I don't see anything too out of the ordinary. Seems like a pretty standard catch row. It's got sand yep, through. Du double moonstone looks like. Yeah, double moonstone, puffin, Nido King. Yeah, you got the two. Yeah, Shrew and Mankey. Very nice. Yeah, so just probably yep. you know just a, a standard good run, which is like I mean that's I, I think if sub sub three is like genuinely very hard, so I, I think to have any sort of like major blemish in the run would be kind of crazy to me. I think in a sub three run. Yeah, yeah this, this this run also kind of um, dropped, I guess. I should say dropped, but it, said it, it sort of um, meant someone new at the top of the leaderboards in uh, in the 80% NMS category. Etchy has been at the top for a while, so he's mm -hmm. definitely got some competition now, which is, which is great. Yeah. And as you'll, see, as you'll see in the future, uh, some other people beat him. So, like, yeah. now it, it very much happened very quickly, pretty much all in the last month, that... People are getting sub threes and, you know, coming into contention with Etchy or you know beating him as well. So, cool. we'll we'll see what happens. We'll see if he wants to come back and takes take his record back. But in the meantime, we got um, second place now, which is a uh, Randall getting a two fifty nine seventeen in Pikachu. This happened after Saiyan's run. Um, this is probably this is a lot more recent. Um, oh no, it's actually not a lot more recent. It's a uh, it's a couple days after Saiyan's run. Yeah. Um, and it happened during a race actually, <laughs> with uh with me and Iron. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, was it was it a very good race? I must admit, but uh, definitely seemed like uh, his run was pretty much solid throughout. No. No sort of like. Major blemishes, as we said. Randall's a, a very established runner. He's been running Let's Go for, for a while at this point. Yeah, he's really. I can remember the days when he was running Potato Cam, and he's come a long way. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you know he's been really he's been really good at grinding the AOP as well as the diploma, and uh, he's always been a good runner in the any percent uh, NMS category as well. But uh, this is a very solid time. He's definitely coming to his own in preparation for this tournament, for sure. Yeah, he's very uh, committed to doing well in the tournament, for sure. Let's just scroll ahead and see what his catch catch route looks like. Actually, let's go back a bit. I want to see his Caden. Probably not that bad, <laughs> considering his... 
That is what I scrolled to actually. It was Caden. <laughs> Seems like no double moonstone this time. Yeah, no shrew. Abra. Okay. okay. Abra, Krabby. No Nito F, no Psyduck, no Ghastly. No, no Chansey, yeah. Ghastly's really annoying. I feel like missing Ghastly is just like something that just happens. Tower is like really, really troll. Yeah, it's it's kind uh, of an annoying catch. It can be, it can be, yeah, it can be an annoying catch too, so. Oh yeah, that too, for sure. Okay, yeah, he gets a good good Caden here. The Let's Go Endgame is actually pretty deceiving because um, even if you like have good pace coming out of like Sabrina, for example, after you have all your 50 Pokemon, there are still a lot of things that can change your pace. Oh, <laughs> a yeah. A lot probably. of things. <laughs> Aiden, uh, Koga. Gotta hit like Giovanni, at least 400 Samuel, yeah. Naomi. Some other fights in Victory Road. Basically, like every fight in the run after that point has some sort of impact with the exception of a couple. Yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting because like a lot of your time gained and lost early is based on your catches and the spawns and then in the late game it's the fights. So mm -hmm. you don't really have it easy at any point if you're competing for a top time. Yeah. And uh, Randall, seen here, he has another one coming up, but He'll be racing myself and Amber in the Let's Go race that will be happening after this podcast. So stay tuned after that for for that if you're yeah, it'll be interested. a good one. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a good one. Hopefully, hopefully I don't lose by too much. <laughs> All right, and uh, switching gears. Well, we have another oh. sub three. <laughs> Uh, this time on Let's Go Eevee by T-Pat. Uh, this has been a big project for him, and he was super stoked to get this. So congrats to T-Pat on this. This is, I believe, sec is it second place? Yeah, I think it's second place. Uh, Yeah, I think, yeah. yeah. Etchy has a 258, sure. I think. Um, Wait, no, no, no. Does Amber, Amber has a 259 in Eevee and not Pika, right? Yeah, I think uh, you're right. I think they have like a three flat in Pika or something. Flat, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, so I thought it was the other end, but... This is so this yeah, is third place, I know so. Um, oh, so this is so this actually all... third. This is actually third place, then, yeah. So this also happened in a race. It was uh, it was pretty soon after Randall's run, actually. I remember all three of these runs happening like in pretty quick succession. Saiyans yep. into Randall's into T-Pats. Um, and this was a... Was this... Correct me if I'm wrong. I think this might be... This might have been like a D-Rust for T-Pat, actually. <laughs> Yeah, he had like not he, done much Let's Go prior to this. Like he had not much. He he's a, uh, as you'll see later, he got into a uh, game done quick coming up with a uh, teal mask for Scarlet and Violet, and so he's kind of been preparing for that. But he wanted to do some practice for the uh, the tournament that's coming up, that is now currently ongoing. Um, yeah, and uh, he just got this, which is a really really insane time. Oh, for sure. Yeah, Catch Root is kind of interesting. He has Nitto Nitorino only. Nothing else yes. from that line. Uh, oh. <laughs> that's the only thing that really stands out to me. Oh, we could, yeah, that's it. So, got Pikachu. Didn't get Meowth. Did he get Snake? Did not. No Snake either, okay. No Double Moon. Uh, yeah. Bulba. He must have been oh, really yeah, from sort of those catches yeah. because he also didn't get Tenta or Coughing. Yeah, he got Krabby, which helps. Um, he must have gotten... Okay, yeah, he got Bulba. Zubat, Golbat, that's good. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess a common trend between these three sub-threes is, like, they get pretty clean catch route with a... Yeah. Like, you're not, like, they're, they weren't, like, behind and then catching, like, Tentas and Coughings at the end. Yeah. Generally, it works out better if you um, have a bunch of catches in the mid to the mid to early game, so you can just kind of not really have to wait for things in the end game. Yeah, I definitely prefer um, runs that are like that. It seems like T-Pat just got everything though, because I mean, Tenta and Coughing were just, were his backup options that he didn't really have to 
use. He just got Psyduck and Doduo and Ponyta and yeah. Cycling Road. No, so, yeah. no, like bad like one-off catches like Kanga or Onyx in these mm -hmm. runs. Like I don't even think there's a Chansey. No, yeah, no. Chansey could definitely help a run, but like, um, definitely <laughs> really hurt it if it breaks out a couple times for sure. Yeah, I have a question. So, with all these two fifty nines, is there a like a fundamental route difference or something like a different way you have to play if you're going for two fifty eight, or is it mainly just the same route and just getting top end, like catch um, RNG and like fight RNG? There are like some things you can do, but for the most part, the route is like identical. There are some like riskier things you can do when it comes to like different catch cycles. That what maybe allows you to like forgo some experience in exchange for like a faster catch. Um, you see TD pipe popping off there. Um, but yeah, for the most part, like the differences in like the strats for races and for attempts like these actually don't differ all that much compared to what you maybe would think. Um, <laughs> like you definitely, I mean, you see all these people getting great times in races. It's it's like a it's like a pretty consistent game, all things considered. Yeah, there's a lot of variability in the catch route, but yeah, like as as, as Head Bob said, like each Pokemon has a specific attack cycle, and if once you really got the hang of these catch cycles, you know exactly when to throw. You can start throwing as they're finishing their attack, or you can YOLO throw right away. You might get unlucky and they may attack right away, and just kind of balancing, kind of, and you need to, and you also need to make sure you get enough experience in certain places too, especially early on. So it's just kind of balancing all of that, and and that's what the top runners are really good at. Yeah. But yeah. Sense. Well, uh, I think we have. I think we have one more. Uh, one more. Uh, let's go run here. I think it's. Uh, I think it's Randall again. Mm -hmm. Um. Randall almost getting sub three on Eevee. Um. Apparently, this run was not great to start things off, but he's kind of just trying to get deep and runs as much as possible and uh, things turned around here on route six when he ends up catching a chancy which will be coming up shortly oh wow wait this run actually really is not that great at cerulean that's really surprising to me actually so yeah i mean i mean chancy chancy as i said chancy can really like turn a run around and if you can get over leveled you can just do some crazy things in the fights that's kind of what happened with Edgy's 258 and Eevee, and why it's like such a strong, strong run. That's just, oh, it's glowing. And it's glowing too, <laughs> of course. Oh my gosh. I, I assume he's going to get like the full experience. You'll see how much experience he actually gets. It's going to be like a monstrous, monstrous amount. Kind of allow him to, um, you know. Just like skip a crazy amount of turns in the next like thirty minutes. Oh no! Oh, it break out. Oh no! <laughs> it's still gonna be a good experience boon for him though. So it's yeah. It's... I mean, glowing chanty, especially if it's like super size, which I don't know if it's gonna be or not, but um... <laughs> <laughs> super size would be too much experience, probably. Be... Well, at this point, I think it wouldn't be for without the first. With, yeah, without the, without the first ball bonus, yeah. But yeah, two thousand. Yeah, well, not not super size. But... It's not not bad though. You're definitely not not this high level <laughs> at this point. So yeah. But yeah, if you can, if you get like a that, see, that's what happens with Edgy's two fifty eight run. He got a super size chancy, and it got him. I think like twenty six or twenty seven at this point. <laughs> Um, and an Eevee, that's a very large deal to get, like, that close to double edge that early on. You can just, like, save a lot of time. And double edge is at, uh, level 28 for context. Yeah, I think getting that, those extra levels, I, I haven't played Eevee, so I can't, I'm not sure if I'm right, but I feel like it will help Eevee more than Pika, but... Yeah, so, generally how it works is, like, um, so, like, something like a Route 6 Chansey, like you saw there helps Eevee a lot more because of the whole double edge thing, but if you get a Chansey and Moon, it tends to help 
um, Pikachu Pika more. more because you, Thunderbolt, uh, yeah. you can get Thunderbolt realistically. And there aren't many ranges to guarantee for Eevee on, on Bridge that can be helped by a Chansey. Yeah, and I think another thing maybe is the the Eevee is because Eevee is uh, not as fast as Pikachu. Getting those extra levels makes you potentially allows you to outspeed things, which you yes, would normally outspeed yes. as well. So this that's is definitely huge. true. But uh, yeah, it's been fun. Let's uh, let's just scroll ahead here and see what the uh, the catch route's looking like for Randall. Uh, oh wow! So no none of the Pidgey line, no little rat, no snake. Uh, double moon. No pub. Which he used on. It's, yeah. Nidorans. <laughs> no Pidgey to Puff is pretty crazy. Yeah. So much yeah, no So he caught like anyway. basically all the late late game stuff. Yeah. Even Tenta. Yeah. Um, I did see you get get on on Onyx in a uh, golf moon. Oh yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. Yeah, so this is a, a little bit more of an abnormal catch route, I guess, from a <laughs> from a top end time. But if you if you can make it work, it, it'll work. So yeah, so congrats to Randall on on two very good solid runs this past month. Just continuing the great work in Let's Go. So great to see. So if you're interested in uh, in seeing more, there is a tournament going on, and there will be a race right after this one. We've mentioned that a couple times, <laughs> and I think it's it's featuring Randall and Head Bob, yeah, as and well as Amber, who's a, another extremely Amber. good runner who has sub three and in one of the games, and is pretty much on three flat on the other. So, <laughs> really good stuff. Yep, yep, yep. All right, we'll move sure. on to switch gears a little bit here. We got a bunch of uh, Japanese Sword and Shield uh, runs to show you. Yeah. Um, so this is a uh, Yuki Yuki Eleven getting the Sword Shield any percent GPN world record, um, which is a four oh six oh six. I've been watching a uh, Ipir Joe do attempts at this category for a little while now, and it seems like it seems like this run is really hard to uh, match. Um, a lot of the JPN runners prefer using Candy Floss just because it has a much more consistent um, like more more consistent run, honestly. You uh, you get to the end game a lot more often than you would with any of the other refs that exist. Um, but that also means there's less room for, for time save in a lot of places. And um, with Candy Floss, I think we're, we're kind of getting close to the uh, the realistic uh, cap for uh, for the JPN category here with this run. This is a quite a good run here, um, and uh, we we've uh, we scrolled to the uh, Eternatus fight here because uh, in Candy Floss this can be one of the uh, the biggest yep. run killers. <laughs> I have no uh, idea what happened. I just scrolled here, but it seems like... no. I I know, but it's good because yeah. <laughs> uh, because this this is like a very make or break moment. It's like basically the last fight in the run, and it's decently likely to uh to kill Candy Floss and lose like a minute or something. So it's it's pretty scary actually when you get here on pace. Um, just like I mean, you you you're probably gonna like end up finishing the run, but like it very likely may not PB if you actually die. So it's. Very scary. Um, so yeah, um, I don't I don't know much about this run in particular. Um, seems like he saves a lot of time on uh, from from Opal the Gordy. Two hundred nine of six Opal is a very fast time. Um, and that usually stems from Route Eight encounters. Not not getting any encounters. Also, the Gordy fight can be. Um, kind of variable in some places. There's there's like a lot of like slight variation and a lot of different fights in the mid to late game. Um, that will definitely add up over time. So yeah. Um, so I guess we can move on to Yuki's other run, which is uh Shield Candy Floss. Um, Shield any percent JPN world record 
of 40752. Um, the only difference in this route is obviously in shield, there's the two type dependent gems that change from fighting to ghost and from rock to ice. Um, and your assistant nine tails becomes an arcanine, which is actually better for the route. Arcanine definitely is very strong in the early game and saves some time, but um, to counteract that a little bit, Candy Floss handles the two type dependent gems a little bit worse, both of them, than the uh, the sword ones. Um, so it, it's like a pretty comparable route. It's like a little bit slower overall, um, so which is why the, the time is a little bit worse here. Um, but I mean, this is like still a very a very solid time. It's like well above the the record for shield candy floss in English. Um, although worth noting that the the timing is both the timing is different and the the text speed is different between the two languages, so it's not exactly comparable. But um, still a very a very strong showing from Yuki here on these on these two runs. I expect to see more from him in the future. He's a very good runner. Yeah, it should be noted that the sword Japanese run is faster than the English, but shield, the shield English run is faster, and the shield English record holder is in this voice call. Well, yeah, but that's also that's also on a completely different route. It is, yeah, but it's the same thing with sword. I think the top sword time on English is also on a different route as well. One thing I, one thing I like about sword and shield is how many different routes can compete for the top spot. I think that's really cool. Yeah, but yeah, the GPN runners collectively gen, gen, uh, tend to prefer uh, this route. You know, the previous uh, this four ten oh one comparison is also candy floss. This is a, uh, I imagine it is. Yeah, pretty huge jump in the the world record. Yeah, like people don't. I, I think I'd probably attribute that to people tending to not run on shield. I think this is probably mm. just like kind of a one off run. People generally tend to focus on sword when it comes to candy floss, just because it's like a a faster run for the route. Mm -hmm. I see. Um. Again, not not sure, but that's that's what I would guess. So yeah. Um, yeah previous I mean, run was on candy floss, confirming. All right. We'll move right along. We have. Another very good run. I think this is also, yeah, this is also any percent no DLC, so the standard any percent route. Um, so yeah, again, Sword Candy Floss by Watami, uh, another established runner in the Sword Shield community. Um, yeah, I think this is like not necessarily. Oh, you know, you know who we know, how we know these this guy is because he's Scarlet Violet. He's the guy who's, who's competing in Starfall Street. Yeah. For the uh, for the record there, um, so I think this maybe is one of his first runs in Sword Shield. Um, it, se it seems like there's kind of a a Sword Shield uh, renaissance in the JPN community for the last month or so. So we're seeing all the JPN runners going to do attempts there, um, and this is just one of them. So I, I think we'll I think we'll see more more from uh from Watami in the future. He's gotten record in Star Pulse Street many times. So he's a very established runner, so I imagine he'll do good things in this game as well. Mm-hmm. And then our, I guess our final any percent run is only two seconds slower, but it is a another sword um, run by Pierre Jo. Yeah, so this is a Pierre Jo, um, another very established runner more so in English, honestly. Uh, Ipir Joe tends to do more stuff in Sword Shield English, but it seems like there's a specifically a Japanese Sword Shield renaissance lately, as I said before. Um, I think there was, I, th I think there was some sort of like event or something, like some sort of like race that happened, or, or something like that. Um, that like drew the JPN runners in. But yeah, this is whatever it is. This is another product of it gets paralyzed on top this oh. is like this is the kind of the stuff i'm talking about with uh there's like a lot of like little potential time losses you can get in this run towards the middle mid to late game um 
anyways what was i saying um yeah uh, it, this is a I, I mean apr joe is like he currently has the uh the world record for english any percent with no dlc um so i think he's definitely one of the best runners in the sword shield community right now um and so i, I think he's still doing um sword shield any percent jpn when he when he has the time so i think he he may get a good time sooner or later for sure he's a very 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 good runner But yeah, for now, just fourth, because a lot of activity in this category. Yeah. All right. All right. So moving on to the English community for Sword Shield, this is Zypotic getting second place in Pokemon Sword Shield Get Urshifu, Power of Two Fists Get Urshifu. And what this actually was, you'll see in, in the splits, um, he, his splits say Don't Get Urshifu, and that's because he was doing Don't Get Urshifu until he just pivoted. He literally just pivoted as you as you watch that right now. <laughs> because um, in Don't Get Urshifu, you're almost certainly resetting. He got a rare candy there instead of the EXP candy M, which is kind of what you need to realistically get a good time in the Don't Get Urshifu category. And so instead of resetting, he instead opts to go towards the... Uh, the uh the mayor candy in freezing ten coming up, which has a five percent for in exp candy XL, which is now required to get if you want to get yep. record in, uh, get Urshifu. So he just tries to go down and get the candy, and you'll see coming up he actually does get the candy, um, and he gets a two minute PB. That's an interesting place to pivot. Actually, I didn't realize that was sort of the decision point, which is which is kind of nice. It's, I was I was in VC when he did this. I think it seemed like a very like spur of the moment kind of thing. I don't think he was planning to do it. He just decided to go, to go try it, and it just it just yeah. worked. Um, unfortunately, yeah. it, unfortunately, it is a disadvantage to not get the extra M that he missed. So he did he did face a little adversity in this run because his Sable was a little bit under level. Oh, that's true. Yeah, good, good call. Um, but I I think I think. He doesn't expect to try and beat this run in the future because grinding for the XL candy is kind of rough. Yeah. Um, so I think he's happy with this run. And uh, also, quick mention: you'll see in his in his splits, his don't get a shoe run. The one eleven twenty two is a PB that was also not showcased um, on SRC. It's still not on SRC because he hasn't uploaded it yet. He is still actively grinding the Don't Get Urshifu category. Um, but that's the current PB he's gotten. It's, I think, fourth place? Yeah, fourth. Fourth place on the, uh, on the Don't Get Urshifu yeah. boards, and he's probably going to try and get record in that category, which is only it, six seconds better. It's pretty crowded at the top, yeah. <laughs> a lot of runs between, like, 111.15 and 111.30. <laughs> I'm just gonna pull this up because I know I'm up there. Yeah, I'm, I'm currently like, what is it? A th two seconds ahead. Mm -hmm. So. One eleven sixteen, one eleven nineteen, one eleven twenty, one eleven twenty two, one eleven twenty eight. Top five. That's and uh, I mean, all these runs had potential for record. I think. Um. It's it's a, it's a it's a pretty consistent category, all things considered, because there's less reliance on the uh, the candies you get. Getting the two M's is pretty likely. It's like sixty percent to get two M's. Um, so all you have to do is reset for a decent Sobble and then get that, and then you're you're on a run. Um, so there's probably a bit more appeal to play that category than Get Urshifu, which is just a RNG Hellfest at this point. Um, but yeah, that's that's Sword Shield. I think that's I think that's the last Sword Shield one we have actually. So we'll move on. Yeah, this is Carolio uh, Scarlet Any Present Glitchless Japanese with the second place time of five twenty one forty seven. I have no idea what happened in this run. I'm just putting hassle here because <laughs> this is a place where you can lose time. If oh, you get hassle! Unlucky. Hassle stinks. Yeah, any any RNG bad thing that happens in the battles 
in the mid to late game. Like, for example, the, the big problem with this fight is that Dragalge has poison point. Yep. And if you have to heal both your HP and the poison in the fight, it can lose a minute. Because things in this game are very slow. Um, again, no idea if that happens this round or not, but... Um, 521 is like a, a very solid run. Um, not sure how... Again, timing timing differences balances out with tech speed differences in this game. It varies by the game how much it actually affects the comparison to the English run, but gets yeah. poison point. That's not great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so not fun when those things happen. No. But Corolio is a very committed runner. Um Obviously, second place, not too far behind the record. So I imagine he'll keep at it if he, you know, wants to get a good time. He probably will. Yep. And next up, we have a uh... part of me. If I mispronounce this, it's a uh... Kageru Rune. With a Scarlet Violet, any percent glitchless, third place in JPN, with a five twenty two twenty nine. Um, we've we've highlighted Lag Lake as it's known, um, for uh, you know, having your screen get blown up when you look at the water. <laughs> um, yeah, not not too far behind Corolia's run that we just we just hovered over. Um, very solid run. Um. You know, by the English timing, this would be, you know, close to top three, top four, top five. I'm not exactly sure, but um, very, very solid run from him. Oh, crit para, nice. <laughs> Ugh. The, the, the Don Dozo Tatsugiri fight, not, not this one, but the, the next one after this can really be not great times. What is record in this category? Oh, Halkyrie. Halkyrie is a 521.30 in JPN. Oh, okay. That's so right. Corolio is actually not that far behind at all. Whoa. That was weird. <laughs> I've never seen that before. <laughs> yeah, Skull of Isle is a very interesting run because it's very like execution-based. So there's a lot of focus on Platforming, yeah. your movement in the overworld and less about, you know battle RNG because you're incredibly overleveled, at least compared to other Pokemon runs. So it's a very interesting game. Um, I, I just haven't ran it in a little while, so I don't exactly know everything that I'm talking about here. Yeah, it's definitely fun to kind of route a bunch of the categories and try a bunch of things, because there's a lot of cool stuff going on. I, I mostly focused on the single stories, but there's a lot of, a lot of interesting history in the any percent as well. Mm -hmm. Which has been really exciting. Well, well speaking still... of single stories, yep. Uh, next up, we got uh, Shua with um, second place in Scarlet Violet Teal Mask JPN with a two thirty three oh two. If you've been here before, you'll know that the timing is significantly different between the English and JPN timing because the English timing starts from a save that's about fifty minutes in, but the JPN people. Um, have decided that it's they, they prefer if it's done from the start, which is respectable. Um, so this the the run it's approximately fifty minutes longer in in JPN. Um, so this is two thirty three oh two. Apparently there was a little bit of bad RNG with some of the fights that happened in the mid to late game. Uh, I'll, I'll read it as it's written here. There is. One burn, three misses, one confusion, two poisons, and three crit phrases that took world record away. And by crit phrases, I assume they mean critting in a fight that, you know, where the person that you're fighting talks about how, oh, you got a crit, and does a little cutscene thing. Which, all of those things combined is a crazy amount of, amount of thing. There aren't even yeah. that many fights that 
that happen in the in the DLC, and to have that much bad stuff happen is kind of insane. So definitely, I mean, they currently hold Shu currently holds the record in uh don't get Urshifu, I think. Yeah, that's and right. Shield. So very established runner. Um, can definitely can definitely get a little bit of a better time with maybe some better RNG next time if they want to. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this category of the Metacham route, there's a lot that can go wrong if uh, you have to get you have to have for, some luck on your side with for sure the moves and and all these Titan Mons can poison you and it just it's pretty brutal when that happens. So. Mm -hmm. And but, if you think uh, this category looks interesting, feel free to watch TPAD at GDQ run this category. Yep, that's It'll true. Be very that's exciting. Right. So true. All right, and the last run we have in the noted run section here is. Kitamura getting um, second place in PLA any percent JPN with a 339.31. And this is actually very significant because this is the first time in years um, since since uh, both Halk and Shady were not at the top of the English and JPN boards since they basically took it, which was the, the, the rush was probably like mid to late 2022. When they when they were big on that game, um, and Kitamura has been pushing down PLA for a little bit while for a little while now. I think that's kind of where they made their name. Was this game? Um, it's a very very if you're unfamiliar with the PLA speedrun, it's a very very high skill game with a lot of uh, intricate movement and timing. We've uh, we've highlighted one of the more tight spots in the run where you kind of have to be pretty quick to catch some stuff in the evening um, before it rolls over to nighttime. He's uh, going to go over and catch chat out before it's too late, hopefully. Um, before it rolls over to nighttime and you catch the uh, static dust clops to, to trade in for the mission. Um, so yeah, very, very high skill game. It's very, very impressive to see a time like this in PLA. Um, 339 is not easy by any stretch of the imagination. So yeah, congrats to Kitamura, for sure. It's a very cool game. I really liked playing it casually. Never got, never tried speedrunning, but maybe one day. All right. We've got a couple honorable mentions. I think only one of them we have video for, but we'll... This one's on Twitch, so it'll look kind of funny on the, on the <laughs> view here. So I apologize. <laughs> So this is uh, let's move that. There we go. That helps. Gleffy's uh or JLF, I guess is how you say it. Um, this is his uh his master work that he's been working on for the last like year or so. This is uh Octafecta. So this is all main series games, Gen one through eight, all in a row. He beat the previous uh world record for the Octafecta by over an hour, which is very impressive. Um, and he was the third person to complete an Octafecta beating uh, both ATN and Cruel, who have done them before. Um, so this run is incredibly long. The final time is 29 hours, 8 minutes, and 34 seconds, which I think may have been done RTA, but I don't actually know. Oh. Um, definitely ATN and Cruel took sleep breaks, but I think when I was looking at the boards earlier, I saw the RTA and IGT times were the same, which I feel like means to me that they, he didn't actually sleep during this run, which is... That's pretty wild. Insane. Good <laughs> board, <Zane. laughs> Um, so yeah, and I and I was looking through the times, and it seems like he got pretty solid times for yeah, most respectful of the, uh, times across the board. Across the board, which is really really impressive. So very 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 good showing from Jaleffy here, JLF. Um, and he's currently in the Lefko tournament, so he'll be that. That's his next project after this. I think I think the pronunciation of his name because he's French is GLF because J is G in French. That would make sense. Yeah, but we'd have to check. With, I, we'd have to check with him on that. <laughs> all I know is that the way I was saying it before was not correct because no. people started saying JLF. <laughs> I think so most I was people like, say it's probably JLF. much similar to that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, Hidden Power Fire? It's not like really good. Hit, Hidden Power Fire is one of the better ones. Yeah. Um, it's not the best one. The best one you want is Poison's a lot better than all the other ones, but Fire is still worth getting. Yeah. 
I think for like grass trout, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sorry, just had to point that out. <laughs> um, yeah, Giga Chat appropriate for this Giga Chat run. And lastly, we have, uh, I guess we don't have a VOD for it right now because it's kind of new, is um, Blue Magma getting sub seven finally in Pokemon Sapphire Catch Em All. Um, now this run, this run that he's been doing, it uses glitches. It uses the male glitch that he and Icy and a couple other people um, discovered last year, probably, um, to to optimize the catches a little bit, uh, make it so that some of the catches become easier. Um, this is a very very solid time, obviously. Um, you know, glitchless this would be a lot longer, and catch them all categories tend to be. You know, upwards of twelve hours sometimes in in games where you can't use any glitches. But he's been definitely his, his last PB I think was a seven oh 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 five, which was just off of this, and I think he was not quite happy with that. Um, and so he got this he got this time recently, which I think he's content to move on with from. So congrats to him. Yeah. Nice job. Very nicely done. Yeah, so we have a few marathon runs coming up. We'll just kind of keep this run up on screen. We don't have actually. I didn't get the marathon list. Uh, the the schedules opened up for this, but a few marathons coming up in June, and then sort of moving into July. We've we've included a couple of July ones as well. Uh, first up, we have La Parceton, twenty twenty four. I don't know how to say 2024 in, in Spanish, so I apologize. <laughs> uh, we, with, you know, we have Diego Lazo R4, who's actually in the fire, uh, Let's Go tournament as well, and has just picked up that game, which is really great. But, he, but he'll be running yellow any percent glitchless on the 8th of June, which will be effectively right around when this podcast is airing. It's about 1230. <laughs> so, uh, Maybe already happening. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on whether they are running ahead or behind schedule or not. We'll see. Um, we also have the Lady Arcaders Out of Bounds Toronto 2024. Now, I didn't know about this because I live in Toronto. That's very interesting to me. Um, Corva May, learn with Pokemon Typing Adventure Catch Mew on the 18th of June at about 7 in the morning. So I'm sure that'll be a blast to see that. Uh, then on the 21st of June at Yuru Tasu, which might be, I'm not sure what kind of, this is a Japanese speedrun yeah, or not, or Japanese, marathon or not. Yeah. Icarus running PMD Blue Rescue Team, no Wonder Mail, no quick save. I think that's QS, mm -hmm. any mm -hmm. percent. And then of course the premier event of the year, well, one of the premier events of the year, but definitely of the summer. Summer Games Done Quick 2024. We have two runner or two uh, runs from PSR. Uh, one of them was our our guest from last month, which is TTS for Life, uh, running White Two, either any percent or Challenge Mode, depending on an, if an incentive gets met. Uh, that'll be on July 4th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, and then we have T Pat, who we talked about earlier running scarlet teal mask that'll be on june 30th at 7 p.m eastern time so definitely will be a good uh, good one to watch for that as well uh also shout outs to tucker just typing those that date and time in as i was speaking so <laughs> <laughs> right on cue <laughs> just right now. um <laughs> And then finally, we actually this is this one's uh, moving into July, um, but it's another pretty big marathon down uh, down under in Australia, the Australian Speedrun Marathon ASM 2024. We have a race between Worcester and JT Magic Man, Omega Ruby versus Alpha Sapphire, any percent. So that'll be uh, that's always an interesting one to watch as well. That'll be on the 17th of July at about 10 to 6 in the morning, Eastern Time. Uh, right. The I guess a few more things before we we wrap up. Um, we may or may not have a podcast next month. It's kind of a busy time with GDQ, and then I'm going on. I'm going away for a bit, um, but we'll try to get another uh, podcast um, recorded, probably offline, and then we'll 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 air it on stream the following weekend. 
So stay tuned for that. Uh, if not, we'll be back in August, the beginning of August, for a very long, I'm sure, <laughs> podcast <laughs> to cover a couple months there. Um, there we still have, we did mention PSR Marathon um, sub run submissions. We still have volunteer signups as well. We need a few more people for a couple of the different committees, uh, particularly uh, PR, I think is one of them. Um, so that'll, those are still, we're still accepting those and they'll be due, uh, in by June 19th and we'll, uh, have a chat go chat command, uh, for the marathon. Uh, so you can have a link to that. And then of course, make sure to ch follow our guest today, Wong bro. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Anytime. And, uh, of course, follow the hosts as well. And you'll see their uh, you'll see their channels our channels pop up in the chat now roughly, and follow us on Twitter or X whatever you want to call it <laughs> these days. Twitter. It is Twitter, yes. <laughs> um, Twitter forever. We, we, we have a podcast Twitter. We should be trying to use it more often. I, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll try to we'll try to make that work moving forward. So, anything else from uh, you guys before we sign off? Uh, no, I think, that's it. I think right. that's all. Enjoy the race. <laughs> Good luck, Head Bob. Good luck, Head Bob. Thank you. Yep. I'll do my best. Best of luck. <laughs> all right, so yeah, we'll see you hopefully next month. If not, uh, the month after. Enjoy the uh, the summer and the tournament, and uh, we'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>